is a matchup of the best running attack in the league against the number two running attack and the, the, the number two running defense in the league. It's 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 going to be the 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 unstoppable force against you know the immovable object, so to speak. Then I don't know. There's something about Houston. I I, I truly believe that between between Koki and D and 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 Tim, I think they have they've begun to find a formula to you know what I'm saying to to, to get back to the playoffs. Where, you know, the, the big thing was, could they put together a whole game? And against the fall, they did exactly that. The week prior to, they dismantled Orlando. The week before that, they went to overtime against Santa Fe. The week before that, they went to overtime against your shark. So they could easily have won their last five games. I truly believe they have found their way, and they're back at it. And it's so, I I like Houston. I like you know it's gonna it's gonna be a blackout in Houston, and Black's gonna do his thing with a you know a couple of big plays, and it's all about you know, and and you know Sim is good for one big play one big play per game. He got a big play in some way somehow, but it's all about it's all about Scrabble. You know their quarterback. I can't pronounce the name. Do I actually pronounce the game? The, pronounce the name. I'll just call Maga Baga Boogie. You know, it's all about his scrabble. Can stay away from OK OKC's free safety. Because that if you keep the ball away from him, Houston has a very good chance of walking away with the victory and walking away and, 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 and going away fashion. I'm talking about double digits. If well, well. scrabble if scrabble gets a little too, you know, loose with the football and and that big free safety for OKC gets his hand on it. That could spell doom for Houston. So, I, I really I like Houston this game. I like I like what Kofi and Sim are doing over there. I, like I said, they, they have found who they are, and they've been putting together complete games. And I don't see why this would change this Wednesday on SFN One when Cam will be commenting on the game. Well, here's my question for you: Is and I'm gonna try and say his name right, Mahor. I mean, I'd actually say it, but it's uh, Steve uh, uh, Abagwe, Abugwe, something like that. Is he finding himself at the right time? And what I mean by that is this. I'm going to say two names to you, and you tell me what those names mean. Michael Davis third, or Michael Davis. I don't know if he's the third or is he. He's not the third. He's just Michael Davis, correct? And yeah. the other one is Zach Parker. What do those names mean to you? Um, that's a good question. Well, I'll tell you. Mike Davis, 108 yards. Zach Parker, 100 yards. Those two are the only two running backs this season to eclipse 100 yards against OKC. Nice. And those were the only yards they got, 108 and 100 exactly. Everyone else has been held under 100 yards. And that J. Calvin Kim we talked about earlier, they held him to six yards on 15 carries. So, this is a team who stops the run, and it doesn't matter who it's been. It doesn't matter who it's been. I'm going to say that again for those of you who didn't catch it. It does not matter who they play. They stop their running backs. And you know as well as I do, 108 yards ain't squat in the SFL. So... If they're stopping guys like that, Parker, like I said, Parker got his 100 yards in week one. They held Heath Chul under 100 yards. They held Deion Hawkins under 100 yards. They said Silofino under 100 yards. And then, like I said, there was uh, Davis who had 108. They uh, held Johnny English under 100 yards. Uh, K.A. Calvin Kim, Beasley, uh, myself, and Dwayne Lane all held them all under 100 yards. And if you go look, at the freaking individual leaders in this league, as far as quote unquote rushing goes, okay, they stopped two guys in the top four from going over 100 yards. Zach Parker, who's in fifth, only had 100 yards. 
They didn't get to play Overstreet or Darnell Black. So that's the number one and number two guys. Could the fact that they're one and two make that much more of a difference in this running game? Or is it because Steve Abagwe, I think that's how he says his name, he he has been finding himself recently. He has been playing very good. He has not thrown interceptions, I guess I think it is, in two weeks in a row now. Since he's being efficient, OKC is going to have to honor him a lot. Could that open up the door big time for Darnell Black to actually have one of those Darnell Black-esque type games? Because quite frankly, OKC has been underrated all season. Houston's kind of been underrated all season. But OKC's defense is disgustingly good. I mean, it, it is insane. They have lacked offense all season. If they'd have had any kind of offense this season, I think we're looking at a team that may be battling for the number one, number two seed in the conference. And I firmly believe that. Uh, I jokingly said to Mike Irvine, I said, if I was still your offensive coordinator, I said, you'd have been the man this year. <laughs> because uh, he didn't have no defense last year. And when I came in, the offense was flourishing. This year, it's the opposite. He studied defense like nobody's business, and he has discovered something. And it's working because teams can't run. So I'll get to the, like I said, I'll get back to my point, and then you can answer it. Is Steve finally getting in the rhythm going to help the fact that they can't let nobody run on them? They don't let nobody run on them. Can Darnell Black get free in this game? And is it going to be because of Steve having a good game that allows it to happen, or can Darnell Black do it on his own? They go hand in hand. Let me let me tell you why. The kind of defense OKC likes to run. They like to run that single high safety eight in the box, and that's how they've been stymieing running attack. Dr. Sim has a like I said, he has a big play in him. In the same way, I also said they're going to have to stay away from Billy Joe Caster. Because Billy Joe, if you if, if, uh, scrabble, if he loose with that football, trying to create a big play, if Billy Joe's going to crack that ball down and, and take it away from Houston. Now, Houston's no slouch on offense. The, the, the issue they had this season was defensively, they couldn't stop anybody. And that's when, uh, that's uh, before Kofi jumped the board, and now these past few weeks, They've been tinkering, and I think they found a formula to at least slow teams down enough to let their offense be more of a factor at the end of the game. So while OKC sits in there, you know, their eight-in-the-box defense, letting Billy Joe roam deep back there to take away the big play, if he, speaking of Billy Joe here, if he gets nosy trying to stop a blackout from happening, and Dr. Sim gets loose in that secondary. Well, hey, I don't, OKC could stop all the running backs they want to stop. The deep pass is hitting over the head. And if they're trying to take away, then in turn, if that big play happens and they try to back out to vacate and try to stop the big play from happening, which then creates lanes for Black to start to hurt them, and then they got and then Houston has them on their heels all game long that's a recipe for disaster for OKC as well. So that's where, long as their quarterback remains clean, as he's done the last couple of weeks without turning the ball over or forcing the ball in the coverages, Houston should be fine. They also have arguably the league's best back in black. So OKC, yes, they've stymied running games this whole season, and nobody runs on them, but they've also haven't ran into, I mean, okay, yeah, OKC okay, hasn't ran into Houston yet. I have to stop someone like Black, who I had, who I had the, ple- the pleasure to have the game plan against, and that was a headache and a half, having the game plan to stop Black. So I, I, I'm speaking of first-hand experience here. So it's going like it's going to be a great matchup. That's why I'm glad it's on one. Cam going to provide us with his angelic voice on the play-by-play. Uh, for this game, um, and it's going to be awesome to see whether or not OKC can stop Black, and when they do stymie Black, how do does Houston then respond? Does Scrabble create big plays for his own team or create big plays for the other team? 